Hello. Welcome. Uh, we're going to be talking about God's view of money, part four. And this is a uh, session two uh, that has to do with stewardship and how to be a steward. All right, so, so that's what we're talking about. You know, we're stewards of our money, of our time, etc., etc. But we just happen to be talking about money. So we're talking about how to be stewards with your money. This is session two. And we're just going to get into some more parables that Jesus uh, taught and, and talked about when it, when it comes to dealing with your money. So I think in the first session, uh, we covered uh, the parable of the wise steward, and then we covered the parable of the unjust steward. Now we're going to finish the unjust steward, and then we're going to get into the parable of the ten talents. Right, uh, Jesus did talk about money more than anything. Whether it was very brief or he threw a quick example, however you want to describe it, but he, in my research, in my search of the scriptures, he did talk about money more than any subject, predominantly in his parables. So we're just going to get into that today. Uh, a steward, again, is a person that manages something that is somebody else's now there won't be money the currency paper money in heaven uh, but uh, God is creator of all things so everything is sort of derived from the fact that God is creator of all things so that's the explanation of Hard. It won't be this green money cash in heaven, but God still owns it. Amen. So, with that being said, we're stewards of what's God's, and with that kind of perspective and mindset, that mindset that should help you determine and decide and choose how and where, etc., you're going to spend your money. Again. I'm not the perfect example, but I'm headed in the right direction. I haven't arrived, but I've left. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I was. So that's a good attitude to have. That's a good place to be. I'm headed in the right direction with this. There are tons of testimonies about uh, money in my life. And uh, God is good. God is faithful. And he doesn't mind you being wealthy. Actually, he wants you wealthy. I found four times in the Bible where the Bible used the word wealthy. He wants you wealthy. So we are able, believers, are able to live comfortably. Style is not sin. So if you have a big house, a big car, style is not sin. God don't mind that. But he just wants your heart right and he wants you establishing his kingdom. Deuteronomy 8.18 give you power to get wealth, gives you ability to get wealth. So God didn't just give unbelievers all the ability to get wealth and be able to have the power of money in a sense of to be able to do what they want. He wants us to, he wants believers to be wealthy, to have our hearts right so we can be wealthy and we can be distributing money like it should be and handling money like it should be. The money is only the power of money is only in the power of the person that its hands is going through so that's the only power that money has is as it passes through the person's hands according to their heart that's where the power is and people give you know 
unbelievers give, but they want tax write-off, they want some kind of feedback. The world's way of handling money is you hoard and you save and then you uh, gain that way. God's way, nothing wrong with having a savings account. If you don't have a savings account, you're dumb. Okay, you're stupid. If you don't have a checking account, you don't save and you don't spend wisely, you're dumb. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that uh, uh, God would, you know, God's way of multiplying is given. And that don't make sense to the world, and it shouldn't. It, it should only make sense to believers. So, let's get into this. Let's finish Luke 16. Luke 16. Again, this is part four of God's Your Money. And I believe we stopped at... Luke 16, and I believe it was, well, let's just go with verse 10. We'll start with verse 10 again. Luke 16, verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is, is unjust also in much. I remember teaching on this before, a couple weeks ago, and I remember explaining that people believe that if they're irresponsible with five dollars that they could be responsible with five million with five million dollars and uh this scripture counters that if you are unfaithful at least you will be, you will be unfaithful with much and vice versa if you are responsible with five dollars you will be responsible with five million dollars verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches okay so let's begin here if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches so this is a powerful verse this verse stands out when it comes to money and how being able to be responsible with money correlates and ties right into how you will be responsible with spiritual things how you will be able to trust God for healing how you will be able to walk in peace how you will be able to play your role in marriage how you will be able to play your role in parenting this is a direct reference to the truth of if you are unfaithful with money it shows a sign of immaturity and then that leads to you will most likely or you can guarantee that you're going to be unmature with the true riches of your spiritual walk jesus tied dealing with money and be responsible or irresponsible to spiritual truth and and true riches and be responsible with those things being able to be in the fivefold ministry being able to handle people being able to handle persecution and affliction we can go on and on and on about all the spiritual true riches that we can get into that Jesus is referring to but he is directing being irresponsible or being responsible with money to being able to be responsible with spiritual truths and that is huge a lot of people wonder why and they're more and it's more than than just this reason but a lot of people are concerned with how come I am struggling with this part of my walk how come I'm struggling with this part of my walk etc what is the problem Jesus pointed out what part of what the problem can be here is your irresponsibility with money now I'm not talking about the fact that you just tithe or you like and we talked about tithing already or you give you know here and there and there okay here's a measuring stick you can measure yourself to know that you are given out of a godly heart when it's inconvenience not in, you, you don't only give at your convenience you give when it's inconvenient to you and that 
displays a godly heart of giving. So, you know, I had to say that because people say, well, I give, well, I take care of this, this, I take care of family. Yeah, okay. And we talk about how them things are important. But are you giving when it's inconvenient for you? Okay. I'll stop there with that. But yeah, are you giving when it's inconvenient for you? With that being said, if you are faithful, let's read it again. If you are unfaithful or unfaithful, if therefore you have been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your tr trust the true riches? Okay. It's going to be hard, and God is not going to put into your trust, okay? Uh, uh, with, uh, with godly results, you know, because gifts and callings are without repentance. So it's not like God is going to take away your calling, take away your gift, which is why we have politicians that are ungodly but are still in that calling, which is why we have athletes which have godly talented gifts but they don't give credit to them because the gifts and callings are without repentance it said this in romans i believe it's eleven twenty nine. so but he is saying in a godly manner how can you believe that you can be trusted with true spiritual truths if you are irresponsible with money brothers and sisters you have to have to have to get this this is crucial if you're struggling wondering why you are not receiving the things of God or struggling in your walk you can start many places but one place you can start is and where is how are you handling your money that is coming through your hands and that is a huge, huge truth that we need to take a grasp upon and we need to take heed to and begin to start operating in. Be responsible with money. Start small. Start with 20 bucks. Move up to 50. Be responsible with that. And then watch how your spiritual maturity as far as other truths as far as spiritually is concerned, watch how that grows. And that is a huge truth. Amen. Verse 12. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Alright, so another man's. Again, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Won't be money and currency that type in heaven. But God still owns it in a sense. He is creator of all things. And all things have derived from God. So, God owns it. Okay. Uh, and we're stewards. This is a good definition of a steward. Even though it didn't say steward, this is a good definition of it. It's a steward. It's how can... Let's read it again. If you, if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's. Meaning... And this is a parable, so it's talking about the steward wasn't responsible with, with, with what was somebody else's. Okay, but so a, a parable which means a parable means that he's taking a natural reality and comparing it to spiritual truth. So the spiritual truth in us is that God's on it, and we are stewards, and we should be taking heed and considering. Okay where and how and what we are doing with our money verse 12 who shall give you that which is your own how can God put his trust in you okay to continue to move you forward with money if excuse me if you can't handle that which is his so if he's given you something that is his and you haven't been able to handle it responsibly how can he uh, promote you and people will say well brother it's people all the time that are 
still prospering in the kingdom of God, outside the kingdom of God, and they're irresponsible. True. And that's because there is a spiritual law of uh, you reap what you sow. And God has put the money law in motion where, again, you don't have to repent. And there are ways to make money. He, he's put that law in motion and he's not going to revoke that just because people are using it irresponsibly. So that's where you get the, the, the unbelievers that are prospering. That's where you get the people that are ripping people off in Christianity. That's where you get the people, not all, but some, maybe even most, some people on TV are misusing money and getting people to give them money when they're not even spiritually feeding them, just misusing it, okay? That's where you get the misuse of it, that there's a spiritual, financial law put in motion here on earth where you can make money even if you rip people off even if you steal you know robbing banks etc 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 like there's consequences for these things but there are ways to make money and God is not gonna take that away just because people are doing it irresponsibly so he wants us to be mature and be able to make a godly decision okay and make a choice Deuteronomy 30 19 choose life and be able to be responsible in our choices as in what we're doing with our money and not irresponsible but God is not going to revoke it I was just reading in Matthew uh, I, I believe it's Matthew 5 45 where it talks about it rains on the just and the unjust and that's what it's saying is that God put laws in motion you, you reap what you sow you can make money and people misuse it you know by or, by ripping people off by stealing from them you know, by by not telling all the truth and um, being misleading and deceptive, whatever. And it's the same thing with sex. You know, God has put the sex law in motion where there's male, female, and they produce child. But people misuse that as well. God's not going to take away that spiritual law that go into effect of a man plants a woman, a, a, a man plants a seed into a woman and then she conceives and gives birth, he's not going to take that away just because people are misusing it. Same thing with money. God has put a, a law in motion where you can make money here on earth. And unfortunately, uh, even by ripping people off or whatever you need to do. So that's uh, my point of saying that is that that's where you get the okay brother you're saying that God's not going to promote you but it seems like people are being promoted even though they're bringing people off well two things with that one there's consequences and they're going to have to answer to God or one there's consequences and as far as the unbelievers and if you don't build this house by the Lord it's in vain I think that's Psalms 127 he that labor if you don't labor in the Lord, and um, might be misquoting it, but you labor in vain when the Lord don't build your house. Again, I think it's Psalms 127. So it's in vain anyway with the unbelievers. So they're not gaining nothing spiritually. And the people that are in Christianity that are misusing this aren't gaining nothing spiritually either. Either. So you might be gaining something here, but what does it say? I believe it's Mark 8:36. Whether the profit of man to gain the whole world but lose his soul. I'm not saying that all are going to lose their soul and go to hell because some Christians can still get to heaven even though they're misusing money. But the unbelievers, you can definitely say, what's the point? You have gained the world but, you, but you're losing your soul. And then as believers, you're saying, what's the point if you're gaining something but you haven't gained nothing as far as spiritual rewards or as far as pleasing God and you have a weak testimony even though you get into heaven so it might seem like it's benefiting you and it might be now but there's no spiritual aspect of it my pastor that ordained me he said do things that is going to affect 600 years from now and that's a good attitude to have do things 
that's going to have an effect 600 years from now. Well, I'm going to be dead in 600 years. Exactly. We're all going somewhere eternally. Heaven or hell. So, what are you doing that's going to affect your life 600 years from now? And that's a good attitude to have, especially with money. Amen. So, moving on to the last verse. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And, and again, that word mammon means money, dirty luger. Uh, it could also mean just uh, material things. So it's a wide variety of what uh, mammon, mean, mammon means. But it basically means just worldly things. Alright, you, you point. You can't serve both one is going to be jealous i don't see how solomon had 700 wives you know 699 of them are going to be jealous and on and on we can go with an example you know how joseph and his sim and how joseph's siblings was jealous you know and we can go on and on, and on about if there is more than one thing happening in your life at a time there's going to be some jealousy somewhere and you're and you can't love uh, both like you can love all your children the same I'm not saying that but I mean as far as like spouses or like uh, just teams you know like as you sport for example you know you can't play for the Chicago Bulls and love the Detroit Pistons at the same time you know your heart has to be focused on one area at a time or you're gonna hate the other and that's just how it is and it's the same thing with your walk God and the devil if you're a believer and you're struggling okay due to an unrenewed mind uh, you're gonna struggle with pleasing God if you're pleasing the devil and vice versa. You're going to struggle with pleasing the devil if you're pleasing God. Period. What, where energy goes, focus flows. So, wherever your focus is, one is going to be jealous when you're focused on the other. And it's the same thing with God and mammon. Is that you can't serve both. One is going to be jealous. God is a jealous God. It says that in Exodus. Uh, where is it at? It's an Exodus somewhere, but I know God is a jealous God. I think it's 34, 14, I believe. Don't uh, don't shoot me down if I'm wrong, but God is a jealous God. And that's what he means by that is I'm not sharing glory with nobody. I don't want to share my personal relationship with you with nobody. And a lot of spouses and a lot of kids and a lot of friends get confused with this because Jesus says, in Matthew and in the Gospels, I didn't come to bring peace but the sword. And he said, if you don't, uh, you can't follow me if you love your parents, your spouse, your kids more than me. Or if you put them first. And that's what he's saying. You have to put God first. And when you put God first, all them other relationships are going to work out better anyway. So he's not saying that you put me first and then all the other relationships fail. He is saying that you put me first. And this is your best option of the other relationships working out as well is putting me first. And it's the same thing with money. Put him first. Okay. Uh, have your heart. Focus on him. Matthew 6.33. Seek you first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And your heart with money won't be a problem. And... Again, if God can get it through you, he can get it to you. That's a really good saying in uh, the Christian walk. Amen? So, can't serve both. So that's the end of that parable. That we have went down scripture from scripture from scripture. How the examples of an unjust steward. And the last four verses really covered a lot about how you need to be faithful about how you can't serve both and about how how can you expect expect to be responsible in your spiritual walk 
when you have not been responsible with unrighteous mammon. And sorry for yawning. You know, people get goosebumps. People uh, get all kind of feelings when they sort of sense the Holy Spirit. I yawn for some reason. For some odd reason, I yawn. Instead of getting goosebumps, instead of sweating, instead of laughing, whatever. So, that's just me. Anyway, I had to throw that in there because I yawned earlier and it seems like I'm going to do it again. But that's my, you know, that's just my Holy Spirit thing. Anyway, unjust story. Okay? We covered a lot. And that should help you in your walk and the way you handle your money with God. Now, Let's go on to another parable. Luke 19. And this is the Ten Talents. I've heard over and over and over again people use this example with other things than money. Is that true? Yes. You can't take this and you can't use this with other things than money. But what Jesus is talking about here, the content of it, is it's talking about money again. And we're going to get into the chapter, and we're going to get into the verses, and we're going to see that. So, Luke chapter 19, uh, let's go with verse 12. A certain no nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. And then came the first saying, Lord, thou pound has gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, thou hast authority over ten cities. And the second came saying, Lord, thou pound has gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is that pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I fear thee, because thou art an usher man, thou taketh up that thou layest down, layest not down, and reapest that thou did not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, judge thee thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was your usher man, taken up, that I lay not down, and reapeth that I did not sow. Wherefore, then givest thou not my money into the bank, that in my coming I might have required my own what usher me. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto everyone which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those be my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So, let's get into this. Verse 12. A certain no man went to a far country to receive him for himself a kingdom and to return. So, he went somewhere to return. What is that talking about? Jesus came back in heaven. Jesus is going to come again. Jesus is going to come a second time. I always say Jesus came the first time to help you through your problems. Jesus is going to come a second time to help you out of your problems for eternity. All right, so, the first time he came was to help you through not to skip, not to bypass, but through your problem. As it says in the parable of the, the solid foundation, of when the rain and the winds hit. Not if, but when the storm comes, it says. You have solid foundation. So Jesus came the first time to help you through your problems. He's going to return again 
to help you out of it. And, and that's what it's saying. He he left to return. That's verse 12. 13. And he called his ten servants and, and delivered unto them ten pounds and said to them, Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. If I gave all my children, you know, uh, 50 grand and said, Hey, you know, I'm going to be back in a month. Here it is. Occupy this until I come. I would expect them to do the responsible thing with it. So when I get back and return, we can discuss and talk about what they have done with it, and then we can do the responsible, we can do the responsible thing with it. And it's the same thing here. He said, "Occupy till I come. Occupy money." And yes, you can refer to this as time and other things too. But we're talking about money, and this is the content of it. Occupy till I come. All right. Occupy your money. How are you occupying your money? How are you being a steward with your money until Jesus returns? 14. But his citizens hated him and sent a message at him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And I studied this out, and there's a mixture of believers and unbelievers in here. And these happen to be the ones that are unbelievers. We will not have this man reign over us. That's just saying, a rejection of Jesus. I was just doing some commentary on my website and and in Matthew and it was talking about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The only unforgettable sin is rejecting Jesus. It's not receiving the salvation of Jesus. That's the only blasphemy sin that's unforgivable. And that's what it's saying. We would not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money. The what? The money. That he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Gained by trading. What are you doing with your money? Are you giving? Are you investing it? You know, trading in a spiritual aspect is give and it shall be given unto you. Luke 6.38 In good measure, pressed down, shaken, and gonna run a man shall pour into your bosom. With the same measure that you milked off, shall run to you again. So, men, torn, men pour into your bosom. Are you investing? Are you pouring your money into people's lives? God promises to give back, give that back 30, 60, 100 fold by trading. Are you using your money or, or investing? Are you investing? Are you using wisdom to invest it in the right places? Are you doing the things to gain by trading, either investing or both? In, in investing it, all right, along with being responsible with it, taking care of other things, as well as the most important part is giving. And God promises to give back. If I told you that I'll give you $10, I'll give you a hundred dollars if you give me ten. You would do it. If I told you that I will give you a hundred dollars if you give me ten, you would do it. Okay, but we're so carnal of the flesh that we only see that part and we don't see the spiritual aspect of it. That's what God is saying. A hundredfold. Give ten, He'll give you a hundred. That game by trading. Verse sixteen. And then came the first, saying, "Lord, that pound has gained ten pounds." So. That pound has gained 10 pounds. So he gave, he invested, he gave, he did something with his pound. He did the godly, responsible thing with it. And now it's gained in return 10. The kind of first saying, Lord, that pound has gained 10 pounds. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful, and a very little, thou hast authority over 10 cities. And there it is. Well done, good and faithful servant. That, those are the famous words that we all want to hear from the Lord, but we're not willing to do the responsible things to get there. You know, we're willing, or we want to hear those words, but we're not willing to do the responsible things to get there. And that's not how it works. It's like wanting to have the results of lifting weights, you know, have the body tone and the body muscles, but not willing to work out. And, and that's not how it works. You know, you have to put in the work. Faith by works is dead. James, 
So, you know, you have to put the work in, you have to put the faith in, the work of faith that it says in first and second Thessalonians is work of faith. So you're in the faith, so you do the faith as a as a result of you're in faith, not to get to faith. So you put the work in because you know that God's method it is to is to give back once you give, so you give. Amen. So uh you have been faithful in a you have been faithful in a very little. So, since you've been faithful, as we talked about before, be faithful with a dollar, be faithful with five dollars, be faithful with twenty, be faithful with a hundred, and then you know your heart is right to be faithful with, and your heart can handle one million, two million, five million, one billion. You know, but your heart is not ready to handle a million dollars because you your heart hasn't been able to handle fifty dollars that is a huge deception with people everywhere is that they seem to think if i can just get more i'll be better no if you get more you'll blow more if you get more you'll be irresponsible with more you don't need more you need to be responsible with what you got you need to get your heart right and then you will be responsible with much we already covered that in Luke 16, and now Jesus is covering it again here in Luke 19. Uh, and, and, and verse 17, and, and have thou authority over ten cities. Now you have authority over much. You know you you have been responsible with little. And now God has entrusted you with more. And again, people say people do this irresponsibly and still prosper well the, uh, again that's because there is a spiritual law that is going to affect where you can make money period and that's without repentance and unfortunately people are doing it wrong and that's what you're saying is that they're still using the law of you read what you sow in a negative way uh, and they're misusing it and there are consequences for that, but they're gaining now, and that's what you're saying. 18. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise to him, be thou over five cities. So it's so the same thing. He's been responsible with little. Now God is giving him more. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Kept laid up in a napkin kept it you know in, in your pocket was was uh was was not loose with it you know didn't give spent it 100 percent on them like we can go on and on and on what napkin can mean you know like the point is that you have stored it up you haven't used it to gain you haven't done nothing with it you haven't invested, you haven't given, etc., etc., etc. So you just kept it laid up, all right. Um, and we get it to, and we'll get into the next verse which talks about because I knew you were usher man, like a man of of like uh, responsibility. That's all that means, you know, that you're responsible. That's what usher mean. Is that uh, you know, he was a responsible man, you know, and and kept track of everything whatever but here it's talking about how he, he kept it laid up he didn't do nothing with it how many people do we know or is it you amen or oh me i like to say either amen brother or me that you are not with the money that comes through your hands are not given are not investing it Spending it foolishly, unwisely, and then wondering why, from a godly standpoint, even if you are prospering, why there's no peace that come with it. Verse 21. For I fear thee, because thou wast an usher man, thou takest up 
that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou did not sow. So again, just the fact of he's responsible, you know. He's saying that the owner, all right, even though he didn't sow, is still responsible for the reaping. Even though he didn't put in because he's the owner, he's still going to be responsible and diligent and accountable, okay, and cautious about what the return is. And that's all that means is that even though he's the one that's not sowing, he's the one that's going to be uh, displaying the rewards and the responsibilities for the actual process. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I'll explain that correctly. But that's all he's saying there. He's saying, man, I laid it up in a napkin because I know I kept it laid up because I know that uh, you were a serious man and that you take account of every penny and, and everything is accounted for. So this guy feared because he knew that the owner was super responsible and took account of everything accounted for that he didn't do nothing with it and that's the devil's thinking because for me if I knew he was a owner that took account of every penny that would usher me and compel me like the first two to actually do something with it and, and not lay it up but this guy chose to lay it up and not do nothing with it. Verse 22. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee. All right. You spoke the words. You know what you were doing. You have pr pronounced and basically self-prophesied okay, what's going to happen to you which tells the owner and tells me from reading this that he knew what was going on but his heart wasn't right right so his heart wasn't able to be compelled to give because one he was irresponsible with lease right i could tell from here and 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 two he had feared that the owner was super responsible and super accountable so that compelled him not to do the right thing and that's just backwards to me that's totally backwards to me but again here it's saying out of that own mouth will I judge thee so he said that he kept it laid up and he did that because he knew he was super responsible well out of your own mouth will I judge thee because you didn't do nothing because you knew that I was a man of accountability let's see what happens thou knewest that I was an usher man taken up that I laid not down and reapeth that I did not sow okay wherefore then gaveth not thou my money into the bank that at my coming I might have required my own with ushering alright Wherefore then gaveth not thou my money into the bank. Bank can be literally, bank can be used as a spiritual term, but put it into something. Okay? Bank is a safe place. What is a safe place? God. God is a safe place. God has a safe bank. If you can uh, sow your money into God's spiritual bank okay God promises God's law is he promises to give back 30 60 100 fold it's not ever 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 a even trade it's always get he always gives back more than what you have gave so that's in a sense of a bank you are storing right spiritual finances in a sense for God to return back to you and I've always said this I've always said man you know I use this a lot uh, 
I've had my car beat with a bat. I've had multiple car problems before. I've had just, you know, uh, people rip me off, etc., etc., etc. And I always use Proverbs 631. And there's another scripture that I go with that, that I can't think of right now, but it talks about if the thief be found, he should restore a sevenfold, he should give all the substance of his house. And, you know, people are so, when these things happen, people are so, oh, I'm sorry, oh, this or oh, that. And it might look bad at the time, but I always think about the spiritual aspect of it, of I have spiritual finances in a spiritual bank. All right, devil, you owe me sevenfold. So what I do is I take however much I had to pay to get the car fixed, you, you know, to get the window fixed, you know, whatever. Oh, as it says in Job, I believe it's 225, he will restore you for the years that the locusts have eaten. Alright, so if there's any kind of locust eating, any kind of problems that is due to sin, okay, then you can take a spiritual commandment and say, devil, you owe me sevenfold. So I always take what I pay and I do it times seven and I say, I have that in my spiritual bank. And that's my testimony. I use that time and time and time again. So I got thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in my spiritual bank right now that I have taken and from what I've paid and multiplied by seven, sevenfold, I've taken that number and I've uh, uh, spoken into existence, okay? Um, Take no thought saying, so you says that in Matthew, so you take a thought by saying it, all right, um, call the things which we not as if they were, and we can go on and on about words, so I use my words, and I take that truth, and now it's mine, and I have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in my spiritual bank, that's what he's saying here, how come you didn't put it into a bank so you can gain ushery, all right, interest, what is the ushery, that's the return, you put your money into a bank, safe with God, the usher, the interest, whatever, however you want to word it, is the return that is returned back to you. All right? And that's what it's saying here. Let's read it again. Wherefore then, give not thou my money into the bank, into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with ushery. And that's what it's saying. I would have required my own with ushery, with like interests, mm -hmm. interests. You know, n not not like a. I think it says this in Proverbs that people are overcharging, overcharging people with interests. Overcharging people with interests is sin. It says that in Proverbs, and I don't have the scripture right now, but I read it. it it's either Proverbs or Psalms. Overcharging people with interest, brothers and sisters, is sin. You shouldn't be overcharging people with interest. I've, I've known a person, and this is why I don't lease cars. This is why I just flat out buy cars. This is one of the reasons why. A person the other day was talking about how they have a 2022, I believe it's a Nissan, okay? They pay 500 some odd dollars a month for it. And the, I forget what they call it because I've never leased the car, but I think it's the RPA or something like that, whatever. But that's the interest that you pay on the car as well as the car note. So let's say that you pay 500 a month and the um, interest rate, the interest rate was like 50%, let's say 50%. 250 of that would go to the interest and 250 of that would go to the car payment. Okay, brothers and sisters, that is wrong. That is just flat out, flat out wrong. Why on God's green earth would you want to lease a car and pay, and I'm just saying it's, it's, it's 50%, I know, I know it's only like 10% and seven and things like that, but still, why would you want to pay 400 bucks a month and a hundred of that goes to interest. That's losing a hundred bucks That's stupid Anyway, I can get off a whole nother hour with that, but brothers and sisters. That's just wrong 
how you uh, that's a wrong way of relating to people with money it, you know that's it's sin you know, it, it, it's sin and it's wrong uh, there's a guy you know at my work the owner he's a Christian man but we have uninterest loans at my job that's the way to do it you know uh, and God will return to you the favor and the reward because I can hear people saying, well, how am I supposed to make money if I don't charge interest? God will return the ushery, the interest. God returns 30, 60, 100 fold. And my owner is prospering. You know, he's a prosperous man. You know, a man of God. That's why I've been there for a while. But anyway, you know, brothers and sisters, why would you want to pay 500 bucks a month and then look, and, and 100, pay 400 bucks a month going towards the car payment and a hundred you lose that makes no sense anyway that's what it's saying that there's a bank that you give into and then God returns and I have thousands of a dollar of dollars in my spiritual bank right now just due to the fact of proclaiming Proverbs 631 every time I get ripped off or some kind of locust as it says in, in Job comes and try to eat things in my life amen it's a good testimony verse 24 and he said unto them that stood by take from him the pound and give it to him that has 10 pounds okay another thing in a godly manner you know because there are people that are doing it wrong that are prospering okay in a godly aspect right oh God is going to take from the person that is being irresponsible and give it to the person that is being responsible. I think I heard Andrew Womack say this the other day. He gives away 53% of his teachings. And most of the TV evangelists don't do that. And he was sitting at dinner with one of them and he was explaining how he gives it away and the other person doesn't do that and he was wondering how Andrew is making money then and Andrew was saying God is the returner if I just trust in him if I just trust by giving free uh, material away that God will return 3600 fold that's my return not um, quote unquote 100% just the people's profit is God however you want to put it using other people to return in other ways and that's and that's and that's true here brothers and sisters is that oh, God is probably taken from okay the people that aren't being responsible and giving it to that ministry and the same as man or anybody else that's doing it correctly God is taken from people that are being irresponsible and giving it to the people that are being responsible and you're saying I thought I thought God was a you know like a good God and it's just all good with grace and okay we're talking about money we're not talking I'm not talking about God is gonna leave them broke I'm not talking about God is gonna leave them without nothing I'm not talking about you know God is going to leave the, the, uh, their ministry struggling. I, I'm not talking about nothing of that sort. I'm talking about in a sense of just the byproduct of, okay? God sees who's responsible and who isn't. And us being stewards, that's still under grace for him to proceed like that. Even though it's sort of taken away his taking away isn't I'm going to take this from you. His taking away is more of there are going to be more people blessed towards this ministry, okay, than this ministry because this ministry is irresponsible. So it's not like he's saying, I take for you and take for you. I'm going to take this and, and give to him. It's like, okay, I see that he's more responsible. So the flow of God is going to be veered more towards this ministry that's more responsible. Than this ministry, and that's where the taking away is. So that is.
properly still under the grace aspect. Alright? Had to cover that part. Amen. So let's move on because we're almost done. Verse 25. And they said unto him, Lord, he has 10 pounds. So they were thinking, man, he has much. Like, he already has 10. Why are you taking it from, from him? Or why is the flow going from him, not from him? Because he's more responsible. And there's a reward for that. God is rewarding the respons responsibleness, if that's a word. He's rewarding that. Verse 26. For I say unto you that unto everyone which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. So, for I say unto you that unto everyone which hath shall be given. Hath what? If you have the flow of God going, if you have the godly attitude, if you have the given if you have the godly principles, is what it, 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 it's, it's what he's referring to here. If you have the godly principles, then that's where the flow is going to go. If you don't have the godly principle going, then the flow is not going to be going towards there as well. And that's what he's saying. All right, where the where the godly financial flow is going to be going is where the responsibility is. Again, I've covered this all throughout this sermon. Is that yes, there are people that are prospering that are not doing it correctly. And that is because you can make money on earth, unfortunately, unfortunately, even if it's ripping people off, etc., etc., etc. So that's not the point. There is no spiritual reward. There is no spiritual peace. There is no spiritual flow with that. So what is it again with that? My point is, is that in a godly manner, okay, he's saying, everyone which hath shall be given. All right, so when you have that godly perspective going, when you have that godly heart, it's going to be given to you. And you're going to see the blessings along with the peace, all right, financially with God when you do that. Last but not least, verse 27. But those my enemies, which not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. Again, I believe that there's a mixture of unbelievers and believers in this parable, right? And I believe if you go to Matthew, you can also get a good description of a uh, how he's talking about unbelievers but I really believe that he's talking about the unbeliever part here bring them here before me and I will slay them all right if you don't want to accept Jesus there's a consequence for that all right so stewardship wrapping it up all right two out of the three were wise one wasn't wise they got rewarded well done, good, well done, good and faithful servant, and they got rewarded. The the other one didn't. Okay, and you can expect that when you're in the godly financial flow of God, you can expect that you will get rewarded. And if you want to be in vain, as it says in Psalms, what do you have to gain from that? But now. You know, it, it might look good now, but it's not going to look good in 600 years. So, point, be good stewards. God owns it. We management, we manage it. Okay? So, just be cautious on where and what you're doing, brothers and sisters. That's my point with this. Be cautious. And know that, uh, God sees every penny, okay? There's no need to get into condemnation, all right? But just uh, learn and grow. Learn and grow. And that's what God wants. He wants you to grow, all right? So I know this has blessed you. God bless. Enjoy your day.